Hello YouTube, Sandre here. Today I'm going to talk about something that keeps popping its head in discussions regarding heritability of IQ, and it's the topic of twin studies. So before I begin with my analysis of the papers that I'm going to talk about in this video, here is some pre-info you should know about these twin studies. Almost all twin studies are essentially based on classical twin method comparisons between monozygotic and dizygotic fraternal twins reared together in the same family home. Monozygotic pairs share 100% of the same genes, whereas dizygotic only share about 50. In only a handful of studies regarding determining IQ and its heritability between twins, have twins been claimed to have been reared apart in different families, and only completely isolated twin studies are ultimately trustworthy. Now I will begin. I'm going to talk about a fairly well-known study that is a very good example of how scientific endeavor can go very wrong if you have a clear bias from the beginning. It's called the Minnesota Study of Twins Reared Apart. This study claimed that monozygotic pairs share no environmental similarities in the studies. The MZA interclass correlation of 0.5 for a personality trait directly estimates the heritability of the trait because MZA twins share only their genes. Now these calculations are essentially mean correlations in a sample of pairs, and sometimes they also studied reared apart dizygotic pairs. They focused mainly on IQ and personality. Before the publications of the Minnesota studies, three other TRA studies claiming complete separation were published and included detailed case history information. To make things very complicated for those who have brought forth these studies, including the Minnesota study, to argue in favor of the heritability of IQ, in all of these studies, many of the twin pairs experienced very late separation and many pairs were reared together in the same home for several years. Most of the twin pairs grew up in very similar socioeconomic and cultural environments as well. And this is something that I see these people ignoring when pushing these studies. Also, in studies based on volunteer twins, there is a very obvious bias that has been introduced into the actual study that one has to be honest about. Since these pairs had to be aware of each other's existence to be able to participate in the study, and in many of these volunteer twin cases, their stories cannot be corroborated. Another important thing to mention about all of these studies is monozygotic samples were very much biased in favor of more similar pairs. What this means is that the studied monozygotic pairs are not at all representative of the monozygotics as a population. In cases where volunteers were given payment to participate in these studies, there is also a very clear financial incentive to lie about the separation. In all of these papers, the monozygotic pairs were not assigned to random environments. And considering, like I said before, that in the Minnesota study, for instance, there is also a very clear researcher bias in favor of genetic interpretations of the data. There was also a very high potential for experimenter bias in favor of twin similarity in cases where evaluations and testing were performed by the same person. Like I've said before, most of the monozygotic pairs were reared together for periods of time, instead of actually being reared apart twin pairs, and they had frequent or regular contact and or had a close emotional bond with each other. In one of these studies from 1962, the monozygotic twins were separated as late as age 9, or they were merely separated for 5 years during childhood. And yet, it's important to note that they were somehow counted as separated twin pairs. There's even a case in here where a pair was living next door to each other, and they were simply brought up by different aunts, and they were still counted as, so to speak, separated twin pairs. Like I've already mentioned before, there is something called cohort effects. And these are actually very important to keep in mind, because these can very much explain as to why there are correlations. Now, to argue that IQ or personality test score correlations are at least 50% due to genetic influences, one has to be able to explain away so-called cohort effects. 
I've already mentioned them in passing before in this video. What do I mean by this? Well, even in the cases where these twins were indeed truly reared apart, correlations can still result from the fact that these pairs are of the exact same age, exact same sex, and have the exact same appearance, and also in the same historical eras. And usually they also grew up in very similar cultural or socioeconomic environments. Especially the Minnesota researchers' results in favor of genetics were based on very questionable assumptions. The researchers even stated most of the study was generally oversimplifications of the actual situation and their violation can introduce systemic distortions in the estimates. Researchers decided to bypass the critical first step of TRA studies using monozygotes and dizygote pairs which requires a preliminary determination that the monozygote pairs correlation is significantly higher than the dizygote correlation. Because monozygote pairs are genetically more similar than the dizygotes, a mean monozygote sample correlation not higher than the corresponding dizygote sample correlation at a statistically significant level suggests that non-genetic environmental factors alone are responsible for raising both correlations above zero. And yet, researchers decided against making this first step, and based their conclusions on statistical analysis, depending falsely on the claim that all resemblance between reared apart relatives is because of genetic factors. A statement that I have proven in this video is clearly not true. I could go on and on and on, but you all get the point. The argumentative position that IQ is at least 50% inherited and these studies somehow showing that that is the case is far weaker than people want to admit. And it's getting quite tiresome. Now I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed making it. Thank you for watching. Bye!